Welcome to the moment of vital truth of the redeemed Christian Church of God, House of Praise, hosted by Pastor Andrew Adelecki, whose prayer and ministry for over two decades has set generations free throughout Europe, Africa, and America. As Jesus is being lifted up, divine intervention is about to become a common occurrence. Expect movement, marvels, and miracles. Joshua 1, verse 1. Uh -huh. Hold on a second. Another translation says, Moses is dead. Tell you, say, Moses is dead. Come on, say, don't, don't be afraid of Moses. Say it again. Moses represents the past. After the death of Moses, read... And the Lord, uh huh, uh huh, yes, mm hmm, Shindalabako, ah, okay, that's okay. Moses is dead, a chapter is being closed, another one is being opened. And God spoke to Joshua. Who is Joshua? Who is this man? The servant of Moses. The hammer bearer of Moses. Why would God promote this man? How about the lieutenants of Moses? How about the second in command of Moses? We're going to see one or two things we can do in order to receive the divine transformation for our promotion. Deuteronomy 28. Look at what the Lord in verse 13. Deuteronomy 28, verse 13. And I don't want you to theoretically just absorb this word this morning. I want you to hear the word of the Lord into your spirit. And the Bible says, And the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only. And thou shalt not be beneath. Either thou hearken. Unto the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day to observe and to do them. In Joshua 1, God spoke to Joshua. God commanded Joshua. Joshua was hearing the word of the Lord. But ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. Before you can ever receive divine transformation for your promotion, that's what we call season of preparation. Hear this clearly. Season of preparation. The potential, every one of us, we have the grace to be used by the Most High God. We have the grace to be promoted by God. We have the grace to shine for God. In destiny, there are cycles. In your family, there are seasons. In your office, there are things that are there mapped out for one to move to another level. But how can we attract the favor of God? Joshua was prepared. Originally, he was born into slavery. 40 years of his life. The second 40 years of his life was a servant. Unto Moses. Then he became a military commander. He was being given instruction. But Joshua was found faithful. Men always ask me, how come God is favoring one, is leaving the other? And I say, how about your relationship with the Most High God? Joshua was faithful to Moses. Moses went into the presence of the Lord. He was praying. He was praying. And Joshua remained, guiding the force. And no wonder when the time to pass the baiting came. Who else was found faithful? But Joshua. You know, we say we're the Joshua generation. We're the one that will bring back the glory of God. We're the Joshua generation. We're the one that will put the name of our families on the map. We're the Joshua generation. We're the generation that your parents, they will look at you. They say, blessed be the name of the Lord that you came through us. Moses was the time that was praying, lifting up his holy hand. 
Joshua goes forth into the marketplace. Joshua goes forth into the valley. Joshua goes forth into the war front to fight, to defend. And there are people listening to me today. Your parents are looking at you that what they couldn't achieve, will you be able to achieve? Receive the anointing in the name of Jesus. But people don't know this. Before God will ever promote you, before God will lift you up, it will take you through the season of preparation. You go through it. For example, Joshua was prepared as a warrior. Come on, say warrior. Who is a warrior? A warrior must be bold. A warrior must be militant. A warrior must be able to stand in the time of trouble. Militant spirit. That's why you see David, he saw Goliath, he was not afraid. He saw a lion, he was not afraid. He saw a bear, he was not afraid. But look at the word of the Lord, Exodus 17. Exodus 17, look at verses 9 and 11. Exodus, it's in your Bible. <laughs> All right. Are you there? And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out, men, and go out and fight with Hamalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. And Joshua did as Moses had commanded him. No complaint, no excuses. Is that what you meant to do? I do it. When God speaks to you, what do you do? But, Pastor, when did God ever speak to me? I can't, I can't. No, no, no. God has never spoken to me. He speaks through his servant, he speaks through his word, he speaks through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Oh, obedience is better than sacrifice. Isaiah 1.19, I love that scripture. If you are willing and obedient, thus said the Lord in his word, you will eat the good of the land. Isn't it? When God speaks to you, what do you do? Joshua went forth. He did as Moses said to him, and forth with Hamalek. Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he laid down his hand, Hamalek prevailed. Joshua was fighting. Moses was praying. Victory was being wrought. Why? Because as a warrior, Joshua was fulfilling his destiny. Unknown to him, which somebody else we do, oh, why should I be doing this for God? Why should I be laboring for the house of the Lord? Why should I be giving my offering to the Lord? You don't know that you are preparing your future. The Bible said the highs of the Lord is going to and fro throughout the whole universe, looking for a man whose heart is perfect towards him. But I'm going to let you into a secret in a second because it's not easy. Tell you, say it's not easy. I don't want my children to be commissioned to go to Iraq right now. I don't want any member of our church to go to Afghanistan right now. We will pray against it. We believe you will come back, but I don't want you to see the evil. And Joshua said, hey, go and fight. <laughs> On your journey to your destiny, you'll be engaged in spiritual warfare. Let's call spade a spade. It's a season. It's a season. It's a season. You must be a spiritual warrior. So what do we do when we become spiritual warriors? That's why we pray. That's why you will fast. That's why we sow our seeds. That's why you see us. At times you look so crazy. You are praying. You are praying. Oh God. Oh God. And men begin to wonder what is wrong with you? What have you done? You have not done anything but your spirit is speaking your tomorrow. Could it be evil is well led ahead of time? And you're praying. And you're praying. And you're praying. And you're praying. People cannot understand. But because you have prayer credit when evil comes. For thus said the Lord with your eyes, you will see evil and you will not be a victim. Preparation, 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 preparation. You must go through this. 
Jesus prepared. He went to the garden of Gethsemane. He prayed. He prayed to defeat the enemy. Thank God he won. And you will win in the name of Jesus. Not only that Joshua was a warrior, equally was a word bearer. Word, W-O-R-D, word. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of the Lord. I see the militant church in our generation. We are going forth, but they don't have the sword of the spirit. I see people being confronted and they get paralyzed. I see issues coming. How many scriptures can you quote when they give you a letter of retrenchment? God forbid, when your plane is spinning, about to crash, what will come out of you? Word bearer. Word bearer. Word of faith. They went out to spy out the land. They saw giants. They saw anarchies. And Joshua said, no, we're able to conquer. In the time of crisis, what will come out of your mouth? Thank God, in Exodus 17, 14, you see Moses giving Joshua a prophetic word. A prophetic word. Because things will happen, ladies and gentlemen, unless there is a word. Unless there is a word. Unless there is a word. You must look into the scriptures to find out promises that will meet your needs. Oh, you are sick. I agree you are sick. Oh, you are done. I agree you are done. Oh, you are poor. I agree physically. But thus said the Lord, let the weak say, I am strong. And let the poor say, I am rich. You must be a word bearer. You must be a man of the world. A woman of the world. Over and over. You must be able to say, I know what God said to me. I love these scriptures. Apostle Paul, in the book of Acts, if you read Acts 22, 23, 24 to 26, was going through his destiny. Accident upon accident. Accident upon accident. And at one point he got to Jerusalem. The church, they were praying for Apostle Paul. And suddenly by inspiration, the word of the Lord came unto Apostle Paul. And said, hey, my servant, you will be a witness for me in Rome. Between Jerusalem and Rome, Paul nearly died. But because of that war, something sustained him. Something sustained him. The word of the Lord. And I pray this day, the word of God will come unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. That's why the Bible keeps saying that we must rehearse, repeat, rehearse this word in our hearing. You must hear the word over and over. Read the word of God. Read the promises of God. Claim it. Confess it. Say it out with your mouth. So the word of God must be in your heart. I don't want to give the final bill without telling you the foundation. What we see is the glory. That's why when people see the glory, they criticize, they complain, they murmur, they do all kind of things. It's normal. Hello? If the foundation is right, nothing can bring you down. And then the last one there, equally Joshua was a servant. Not only a word bearer, not only a warrior. Why will I say it must be a warrior? Because, I mean, in case I didn't tell you that, everything in life, every glory must be confronted. Whatever seat of glory has been prepared for you will resist you first. Choir, why do you rehearse? Because of resistance. You want to sing? You can't remember the song. You want to do something? It's withdrawn. Why do we do exams? Resistance. How come you didn't wake up yourself from today? I'm a doctor, and you're a doctor. <laughs> Just don't operate on me. <laughs> you can't call yourself anything. You have to go if you break the barrier. If you break the barrier, if you break the barrier, if you break the barrier, then they will say congratulations. That's why we graduate. If not all the mechanics in our environment and in our neighborhood, they will say, hey, we you two we are graduates? They say, no. You don't call yourself a graduate by mouth. You go to the school. The school of engineering, after four years of rigorous examination, now you have passed. So you must have a militant spirit. Then you must be a word bearer. And then last one there, before I go to the one I'm going for, because of transformation. Joshua was a servant. Write this down. Your covenant is in your service. Your life will come for eternity. 
Serve your God. Serve your God with your time. Serve your God with your money. Serve your God. Why, Pastor, should I serve God? Hebrews 11, 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that God exists. Tell your neighbor God exists. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. God exists and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek at him. The official title of Joshua was servant of Moses. He was not even called the servant of Jehovah. Until the book of Joshua, it was, you will never find it anywhere. In fact, God told Moses, lay your hands on him. He's, he was rather a minister unto Joshua. A minister unto Joshua. A minister unto Joshua. Exodus 24, 13. Moses and his servants. They were going forth. Joshua 5, 14. Look at the word of the Lord. Even when grace came, the angel of the Lord came to Joshua. And Joshua declared, what said my Lord unto his servants? Why servant? Coin from the word service. Why servant? To say, Lord, let your will be done. Submission. 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 And then one day, come on, say one day. Because Joshua was faithful. The man took care. And then we read Joshua 1. Moses, my servant, is dead. Joshua, you go ahead Take over. Why? While Moses was praying, Joshua was waiting at the gate. He was a love of God's presence. He was a love of God's house. Oh, people say, well, how come God is favoring somebody's child? How come God is not favoring you? Do you know what your parents did? What an incredible opportunity we have to cut covenant with God. Now we have time. Now we have grace. We are not in crisis. Oh my God, why not serve your God so that in your tomorrow you can reap harvest of joy? Why not serve your God? But when I was looking to this divine transformation for promotion, I said, Lord, let me connect this because I still can't understand. 80 years of a man's life, can't tell as wasted. 40 years of slavery, 40 years of servanthood. What do you want to call that? What is left? And I discover when God turns to you, it's your turn. It's not over yet. Tell you, it's not over yet. Come on, say it again. 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 One more time. I'm almost true. Almost true. So, what was the secret? For this divine transformation, number last, becoming number one. What was the secret of redeeming the time? What was the secret that can make a man to forget all the days of his sorrow? The secret of being lifted and you will never remember you've seen evil before. This is my own interpretation. Moses must have impressed Joshua so much that in Exodus 33 verse 15, you find the secret there. What's going on now, you children of Israel? You go ahead. And Moses declared in Exodus 33, 15, except your presence go with me, I will not go. Unless you can assure us. Unless you can assure us. So what is it about the presence of the Lord? A man can never be transformed from divine without the presence of the Lord. Transform me. Let me, give you, let me give you some negative picture so that then we end with a positive one. Is that okay? About the presence of the Lord. In your Bible, you find the story of Cain and Abel, isn't it? And Cain killed his brother, shed the blood of his brother. 
Then suddenly in Genesis 4, 16, the Bible says, Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. Ah, that's negative. So what happened to him? He became a fugitive. He struggled and struggled. In Exodus 33, in verse 13, Exodus 33, in verse 14, you find the assurance of Jehovah. And I love this. God says, my presence shall go with you. This week, the presence of the Lord will go with you. God assured Moses. God assured the nation of Israel. My presence shall go with you. Look at Psalm 16 verse 11. The Bible says, in your presence, there is fullness of joy. The presence of the Lord. My physical is contrary. But I am in the presence of the Lord. Look at Psalm 31 verse 20. This is God. He said, thou shalt hide them in the secret of your presence. It's a mystery. We are looking at you when will you drop dead and you keep going. I told the church some time ago, one of my friends got sick. A sister, so sick that the pastor came to say the final bye-bye. You know, when, when a man is sick and people have prayed, instead of recovery, the sister was bloating, bloating, smelling. So they came to give her Holy Communion, the last rite. God did not say within 24 hours, likely she'll be gone. That was more than eight years ago. The husband cried, everybody cried, but the woman was determined. She said, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. She said, no, 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 I'm not going anywhere. What bearer, what bearer, what bearer. What on the inside, death on the outside, but what of faith on the inside. More than eight years ago, she refused to die. They Doctor funeral service in the world and she's still alive. <laughs> Thou shalt hide them in the secret of your presence. No wonder David cried out. Psalm 51 verse 11, he said, oh God, give me my divine transformation. Do something for me. Cast me not away from your presence. I don't care who you're standing before. I don't care the crisis. I don't care what's going on. Just one thing. God, cast me not away from your presence. Is it not written in the word of the Lord? Weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. And I pray God will give you liberty. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18. 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18. Say where the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. There is liberty. Are you a lover of God's praising? Please hear me clearly. Because I don't have the luxury of time. If you're going to receive divine transformation for elevation. And I'm not talking about a man promoting you. Hello? I'm not talking about recommendation from any man. I'm not. If a man promotes you, they will control your destiny. There are people who are kingmakers. When they cough, you must sit down. They say, remember, we help you. <laughs> so what do you do too? You have to obey them. But when God lifts you up. Please listen to me. I'm true. I ask God. In this season that we are, God, can you lift up our head? Can you do something that nobody has ever done? And I love telling stories because I know you relate with stories. And this story is not from Nicaragua. It's from here, from the house of praise. It's a good one now. Are you with me? One of my children came to this country, number one. He, he, he read one course that I can't even remember the course, whether geography or something, or survey. That when he finished graduating, the mother asked, so you'll be reading maps? <laughs> For the rest of your days? You'll be looking at papers? The son of so-and-so is a doctor. The other one is an architect. The other one is an engineer. You, geography. Unknown to everybody. In that geographer, I've been coded destiny. Joined our church in Peckham. We're in Peckham then. Faithful. Come here as a security officer, if you know the meaning of that. 
Then I was preaching on this issue of tithing. Tithe, of course, a young church. Let's cut covenant with God. I just kept preaching. And then they were listening. But God was giving him revelation. He will bring his tithe, I will pray. He will bring his tithe, I will pray. One month he came and said, sir, I have a job. Because he was handing about three pounds, 30 an hour. Then suddenly he got a job. I was 33 pounds an hour or something like that. Oh, we done. The following month, he got a job, 30,000. We done. The following month, he raised his hands again. Another testimony, he got a job, about 50,000. Oh, we praise God. The third month, he raised his hand. I said, I won't call you. And I refused to call him. Then he came to my office with a newspaper. His name gazetted in the newspaper. He says, I got a job. I just wanted to share the testimony. I said, a job? He said, yes. He said, where? He said, read the paper. And in our days, now it's common, in our days, even to get an admin job, you do a special Thanksgiving. <laughs> Service. I read the papers. And ladies and gentlemen, they spelled his name correctly. You know, there are places you go to say, what's your name? Can you spell it? It's because it don't matter. They will do research on you before you get there. They spell all his names correctly. Gazetted his stuff. Then I asked him, I said, how much are we talking about? Oh, he said, Pastor, it's six figures. I said, hallelujah. I prayed for him. When he left, I locked the door. <laughs> Father, <laughs> when will you remember me? I came before him. <laughs> <laughs> 